I just got back to Brooklyn after 10 days at the beach and this rucksack from Tanner Goods is the only thing I brought with me. And this is everything I managed to get into it. And I'm not looking forward to packing everything back into there, but I just want you to see that this 34 liter pack was enough to hold well over a week's worth of stuff to get me through a pretty nice time at the beach. All right, man, uh, this is Nick at stridewise.com, by the way, and I'm walking you through my current favorite big backpack that I take for like multi-day trips. You know, it's the Koru Rucksack from Tanner Goods, a Portland-based company that I really like because their products, and it's, it's mostly belts and bags, they've also got uh, dot kits and wallets and stuff like that. It's a company that I like because their products do a nice job of combining heritage construction and materials with more modern design. This here is the Koru Rucksack. It is a bit too big for everyday carry, I think. Um, it is a roll top, and the great thing about roll tops is you can roll them down to compress them so that if you don't have that much stuff, that much gear in your bag, you can make it a smaller bag. It's less bulky, but uh, yeah, I think it's too, it's kind of too wide and too big for everyday carry. This is what I use when I'm going, uh, when I'm going overnight somewhere or when I'm going out for, you know, like a week, maybe even two weeks, I can use this bag. So this is the Koro Rucksack, and uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about it. So let's start with the specs. So this pack fits 34 liters or 2,080 cubic inches. The maximum height when it's open is 27 inches, the depth is 6.5 inches, and the width is 16 inches. Uh, an important external feature on this beguilingly simple bag is the almost full length zipper you've got running down the side of the bag. So this is actually 18.5 inches high. And it's really handy if you wanna get something from the bottom of the bag, but you don't wanna get through and unpack everything else that you've got in the bag there. Another thing is that it also makes it very easy to access the laptop sleeve, which I've also got in here as well. So uh, the laptop sleeve, it is a zippered compartment. It's only zippered at the top, not the sides, which at first I was like a little bit worried about until I realized that my computer is not going to go anywhere just because it's, no, it's not enclosed by the side like it was fine. Finally, the outer pocket here is 8.5 inches by 12.5 inches. And there's also a water bottle pocket here, which is uh, 8.5 by seven inches. Uh, I put my shampoo in there because I am a dandy, but you can only put in a water bottle. Uh, the pocket here is my main complaint with the bag, actually, like while I'm talking about these external features. What bugs me about this pocket is that it's not really, uh, it's, it doesn't provide a lot of extra room, actually. So it's a very, very slim and sleek and minimalist sort of bag, right? Everything's like nice and smooth. A lot of heritage backpacks, a lot of her, uh, wax canvas backpacks as well. They're often covered in like cloths and buckles and everything else. You don't get that here, which is an upside. Like if, if the bag is full, it's really hard to put much of anything in the front pocket because it sort of protrudes into the inside of the bag as opposed to like kind of protruding on the outside of the bag, giving you actually more room, right? And when you're going in here to get anything like a glasses holder or whatever else you got in here, uh, the zippers kind of scratch up your hand a little bit as well. This is my headphones there, right? So that's my that's my main complaint with the pockets anyway, is that it doesn't, uh, it's very hard to get stuff from the inside if you've got a lot of stuff on the inside of your bag. So moving on to the straps, they are constructed with three layers, right? So on the bottom, you've got some 10 ounce canvas, on the inside you've got some foam, and then on the top layer, you've got uh, some bridal leather, and the whole thing is encased in nylon webbing. Uh, the bridal leather is from a Pennsylvania-based tannery called Wicket & Craig. It's often called English bridal leather, but um, that's just like the, the type of leather, not actually where it's from. Bridal leather is also on my Filson Journeyman backpack. It's a nice leather for bags because it's very, very tough, um, but it has a tiny, tiny bit of stretch to it, so it's a little bit more comfortable than a lot of other really Really rigid leathers out there. And the straps are really easily adjustable as well. When I talk about Tanner Goods merging heritage and modernity, this is like kind of, this is like a big part of that, right? So with most heritage backpacks, the shoulder straps are adjustable just like belt loops. And that's cool and like I love it and it's great, but uh, especially when you're carrying heavier loads, you often want something a little bit more high tech, something a bit more precise. This has very easily adjustable straps like that. You can just do absolutely anything. And there's also a sternum strap as well, which is really, really good for taking some weight off of your back. It's worth noting that um, the buckle here, like this buckle here for the sternum strap and also on the top, here, it's not a buckle, it's like a hook, right? And it's made with this like really interesting sort of aluminum alloy. So you just loop it into the leather up here or across your sternum, and that makes it very easy to open and close on the go. The fact that it's like a hook instead of an actual buckle. Again, a lot of these backpacks, they're made with like buckles, which look cool, but um, they make it not actually that great for commuting. Might be good for a bag to close up and then just like carry without getting into it for like days and days and days. But this is a really good backpack in that it's nice and heritage and tough, but it's not hard to get on and off uh, and open and close very easily on the go. Okay, so that was the straps and the features. Let's talk about the material a little bit. Um, this is very superficial, but uh, I like my bags to be green because uh, I think it works well with earthy colors, your browns and your tans, and also with like black and blue and gray type colors as well. So I was really happy when I saw that Tanner Goods had the uh, Koru in this really nice 
earthy green with black hardware as well. So there are currently three different colors and three distinctly different types of material you can get this bag in. If you're like me, like green, you can get this and it is called the Pacific Moss color. And it's a 10 ounce waxed ripstop canvas from Fairfield Textiles in New Jersey. So what's ripstop canvas? It's uh, extra tough canvas. Uh, it's often used in like outdoor tents and um, canopy covers, that sort of stuff. And it's woven with a reinforcing technique that makes it really resistant to tearing and ripping. It stops rips. And it also produces this slight uh, grid pattern as well that you get on the back. Um, that is from the cross-hatched threads, like their reinforcement yarns. Aesthetically, I don't absolutely adore the look of Rips Up Canvas because I just prefer more simplicity in my fabrics. Like I don't love the grid pattern, but I do quite like Rips Up Canvas, right? Like it makes a really, really tough bag that is very resistant to tears. And also if it does tear, it's resistant to, uh, like the tears don't easily spread. It stops the rips, right? You'll get a hole, but the hole won't like keep on ripping open, 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 which is like really, really good if you're out and about on like a long trip and you can't get anything to fix if you do get a hole in your back, right? Not that it will tear, like it really is very, very tough. I actually asked Tanner Goods why they went with Rips of Canvas for this particular color. They told, me that they, uh, they told me that it brings a new texture into our bag collection while still offering the familiar wear characteristics of waxed canvas. Ripstop is a timeless utility driven fabric inspired by outdoor applications. And there are two other colors this comes in, right? The other one is Field Tan, which is a more traditional waxed canvas. It's also 10 ounces, but it's not Ripstop. But the canvas is still very tough. It's still very densely woven cotton. Uh, it's gonna look great. And then lastly, there's the Navy Kombu bag. Uh, this is, I believe, the newest color. And it's made from kombu, right? Which is a really lightweight milled fabric from Japan. It uh, combines Cordura 500D nylon fibers with a durable water repellent finish. That's called a DWR, durable water repellent finish. It's very, very popular. And it results in a bag that's very water resistant, very weather resistant, very tear resistant, and also 43% lighter than uh, their other fabrics. Which shouldn't be a big surprise because canvas for all its pros, it is quite heavy. It's like the main complaint people have about it. So that's it, three colors you get this bag in each cool for their own individual reasons. So as far as the price goes, this bag costs $390, which is not bad, honestly, although it is not made in the USA. It's worth pointing out, it's made in Mexico. The materials are very American. Uh, the canvas comes from New Jersey, uh, the leather comes from Pennsylvania, but it is put together in Mexico, if that's an issue for you. Um, it's worth pointing out though that it really is, the materials are really top notch. Uh, the straps are ergonomic. It is going to last you decades and decades. It is insanely tough and resistant to tear, water, and uh, just about everything else. It's also worth noting here, this bag is quite large at 34 liters. So I've written quite a lot about heritage backpacks. I've got an article in the description below for everyday carry packs. Those are in the 20 liter uh, sort of range. This one's in the 34 liter range. And those 20 liter packs, they're usually between three and 400 bucks, even at that size. So I looked around for 35 to 40 liter wax canvas backpacks like this one. I had a whole ridiculous spreadsheet about it. You can check out. So here are some options. There's the 37 liter Pathfinder from Duluth Pack for 360 bucks, uh, but it's not waxed and it doesn't have a laptop sleeve and the buckles are a little bit annoying to get in and out of. Uh, Frost River has a really cool 39 liter one for just $270. I really like the storage compartment for dirty clothes at the bottom, but uh, the buckles are a bit annoying again, unlike the Koru. And also I don't like the, the webbing on the side and also it doesn't come in green either, which I consider very important for a backpack. Mission Workshop has this Fitzroy backpack. It's 40 liters, it costs $330, but it's a, it's a little bit too modern. It's not very heritage-y. Uh, it's a bit more branded than I'd like. And also there's like a waterproof interior, which is useful for camping and stuff, but it's very crinkly when you uh, kind of get your stuff in and out of it. Bedouin Foundry probably has the best one. It's 35 liters uh, if you're looking for a substitute. Uh, I could go on and on. I, again, I have like a long spreadsheet here. I do spend like a lot of time researching products before I buy them. Um, but for me, uh, the core is the one that I landed on. I really looked around and it's got that whole funky mix of like heritage and heritage fabrics and modern design and features. And it's the one that I really like. It's unique in all the right places and it ticks all the right boxes. So uh, I'm happy with the price. All right, so. Let's wrap it up with some pros and cons. Pros, I kind of just mentioned them all in that last section, but you know, once more with feeling. Uh, you know, I, I really love wax canvas, right? Uh, it's hardy, it ages really well, it's water resistant, it's tear resistant. And especially with this rip stop canvas, if it does get a rip, it won't keep on ripping and just completely ruin the entire bag. So 
very, very hearty. It's gonna last you a really, really long time. And like I said, Tanagas does like a really good job of like melding heirloom heritage quality type stuff with more modern and minimalist and like ergonomic design as well, right? So you're unlikely to see a bag like this that's not at least covered in like a bunch of really annoying buckles that are really hard to open, that kind of stuff. Plus it has these really easily adjustable straps, which is really nice, very ergonomic. Um, it has a side pocket for easy entry as well, which is like a really big deal and which is another pro, a big upside that you won't often see on more heritage type bags. It's also really good at taking pressure off your back with that sternum strap without having like a, um, you know, kind of like an annoying belt on it. Like I know belts are very good to have on backpacks if they're gonna be heavy to help to distribute the load and everything, but let's be honest, uh, it's very hard for a backpack to look cool when you have like a big belt kind of like cinching you in the middle. So what I really like with the sternum strap is that it's easy just to kind of dangle there and you can't really like see it, it doesn't draw a lot of attention to itself. You can very easily switch it over and you know attach it to the other strap and that really does a great job of taking the pressure off of your back. Um, but it also doesn't have like a big dorky belt. Some potential downsides, it is not made in the US. Uh, the company is American, the materials are American, it's not officially made in the US, which might frustrate some folks. Uh, it is made in Leon in Mexico, which is where a ton of really, really good and very heritage boots and leather goods are sort of made. It's, uh, it's, like, it's like the leather capital of the Americas, of North and South America. If you want a pair of boots, there's a very good chance it was made in Leon. Um, but yeah, it, the bag was not officially made in America, right? Uh, you might not love the price for that. Uh, given, I think my section on price and alternatives and everything that I mentioned earlier, I think if you look around the market, uh, for a, a bag with this sort of capacity and this sort of materials and so on, uh, I don't think you're going to find a, a much better deal, um, especially with the kind of features that I really like in this bag. Um, but uh, yeah, it is still 390 bucks, it's fair enough. Uh, if you found a cheaper one, let me know, but I think, it, I think it's pretty good value given what's on the market. Uh, the front pocket here is very frustrating. Uh, it, it's very hard to get stuff in there if you've already got stuff in the bag and then the zippers scratch up your hand. I kind of sound like a little baby there, but um, it's, it's annoying. I, I wear glasses, right? I've got, you know, glasses and sunglasses, this is where I would keep them. And if I try and get them in and out when I'm traveling, um, it's really hard to do when I touch on my hand. <laughs> so there's no, uh, there's no like inner pocket on the bag really besides the laptop um, pocket. So that's worth pointing out, um, that's not in there. Uh, there's also no belt. I think this is a good balance of bags that don't care about your back, which is most heritage backpacks and bags that do care about your back. Uh, but yeah, there's no belt. Also the gritty uh, pattern on the rip stuff, that took a bit of uh, time for that to grow on me. I didn't like it when I first got it. And for someone who really likes simple looking fabrics and simple looking green fabrics, then you won't be that crazy about the rip stuff. Uh, what it lacks in style, arguably, it makes up for in durability, definitely. But they've also got the uh, a, a normal tan colored wax canvas backpack if that's what you'd like. All right, that's, um, those are my thoughts on my new favorite backpack. I've, I've taken it to the beach three times this year. Uh, I spent like two months there in total. Uh, so I have been using it a lot. I like it a lot. Um, I wish there was more of a pocket at the front, but otherwise, it's good, it's tough, it looks the way I would like it to look. Uh, it's modern in the good ways, and I don't think that it's that expensive, honestly, given the competition and given what it offers. Uh, you might disagree, that's fine. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite large-ish, you know, more than one day backpack is. Uh, if you've got heritage style, even better. Uh, and make sure you subscribe as well, because I've got a whole lot more bag reviews, leather bag reviews, got some of those coming up, but reviews, denim reviews, other kinds of stuff coming up.